Welcome back to the channel guys. My name is Rick. I'm an HVACR technician, which means heating, air conditioning, and refrigeration. I also service home standby generators. That's the reason why I've been doing some of these portable power station reviews lately. All Powers reached out to me with the 600 watt R600 series. This is one of their smaller models, which makes it more convenient, lighter, and charges faster because of the smaller battery. Now this device is gonna be a little different than the 4000 series that I just done a review on that is 3600 watt. This little guy here has some features that the big one didn't have like portability, size, weight, and cost. With the discount code that I'm gonna have linked down below, you're gonna be able to pick this up currently here in May of 2023 for just a little over $210. And right behind it, I have the 200 watt solar panels that are a great accompaniment to the portable power supply. These are gonna allow you to charge up on the go. Whether you're in the backyard, out camping, or at the beach, you're gonna be able to keep your power generator charged up. We're gonna test all these things out. So we're not just gonna read the display and measure it there. We're gonna put these under real life load tests. It's important to know exactly how much power you're gonna need. Well, there's only one way to know that and that's to calculate exactly how much power you're gonna need. One way to do that is to use a kilowatt meter to measure how much power your devices that you're wanting to run actually uses. And then you can add that up to calculate how many watt hours you need. Now this device here is rated at 299 watt hours, which means that you can get 299 watt out of it over a one hour period of time. However, there is an efficiency loss there which we will calculate up in the video. Generally the battery has to protect itself from over discharge and overcharge. Both of them can damage the battery so this device here will shut down depending on how hard the load is on the battery possibly at a 5% or 10% reserve level. Now if it's a smaller load it may let it go all the way down to 0%. It just really depends on the load because this device has built-in management system that's going to determine what the charge rate is and the discharge rate is that's appropriate for the device. Speaking of charging rates this does have three different rates of charge that you can check and change in the app, which is Bluetooth. This little device here also offers wireless charging at 15 watts. It's one of the first ones that All Powers has came out with that has the wireless charging built right into it so that you don't have to remember your USB cords to charge your phone or other wireless devices that have wireless charging. Let's go ahead and get into the testing. This is gonna test the DC battery pack. What we're gonna be using here is a load generator. So we can see right now that our voltage is right in there at 13.23. Right, let's go ahead and test it out at 10 amp load. So we can tell that at three amps, we're already at 12.5 volts. Right now we're running 37 watts. You can see right here what our resistance is and what our capacity in milliamp hours. We're also gonna be doing this on the USBs to verify that they truly can put out the wattage that they're rated at. So this is the first test, which we're gonna go ahead and step this up. So we're at 11.5 volts DC right there. And we're right at the 10 amp mark. And it is running. You can see that that equates out to being 130 watts. When you come down to here, you can see right here, the power shows to be 115 watts. What I calculate that to being is potentially some voltage drop through the panels here. That's the reason why I went with the heavier cables. So like I said, we're right at 10 amps, so we know that it can do it. And let's see how many amps we can go. There's 10.5, voltage still hanging in there at 11.4. Yeah, it didn't like it much above that. Now granted, you can see that it overloaded there. So it's rated for every bit of the 10 amps that it's rated for. This test here proves that it is actually producing the wattage that they called for. Okay, we went off on an E4, which uh, is a error. So we're just gonna go ahead and restart it. Oh, we can see our voltage came back to 13.2. Go ahead and put it back under load. It looks like we should get about two hours of runtime out of this. So we're gonna go ahead and let this run until she goes dead and we're gonna see how many watt hours we get out of it. To sustain the test for as long as possible, so far we are at 25 minutes. We're continuing at eight amps. Wanted to check and show the heat pattern of what we've got going on here. Scrolling over to the device, you can see that our socket area is actually a little bit warm. On the side, you can see if you only got slight heat coming down from below, you can tell the batteries are down here at the very bottom. Coming back around to the front, as you can also notice, you know, there is a little bit of heat in the connections. That's why loose connections are pretty important. Jumping back around, you can see on the side here, down into that area there, there must be a conversion process because the battery packs most likely are more than the 13 volts that they're showing, so it's probably a regulated power supply. Actually, we're up to 154 degrees on the pump spots there. Holy crap. Yeah, I don't think it's 150 degrees, but I suppose it's possible. The center mark is 119, so yeah, you go to that very, very tip. Black's usually the best reflectiveness for 
most accurate temperatures. So internally you're getting about 155. Probably not the greatest connection in the world, but it's what I have available. So come down to the wire, we're right at about 90 some. On the actual device itself, looks like we're not getting much over 117. So it actually drained it all the way down to 0%, which I've never seen done before, but that was probably because we were going very slow at the amperage that we were pulling it out at. Looks like we came in at 252 watt hours. Lasted two hours and 38 minutes. So there you have it on that part, which that should be equivalent to the same thing for your 12 volt here, because 12 volts, 12 volts, it's the same thing. It's just a little warm, nothing burned up, didn't hurt the plug or nothing. This is uh, the same adapter I use for the solar panels. Now we're gonna go ahead and recharge it. You can see that we're already up to 4%. It's only been charging for a short duration of time, but you can see that the charge rate right now is right around 200 watts input which should be about an hour and a quarter, you would figure. Uh, it's just, uh, you're filling up a 299 watt hour battery, going in at 200 watts. So you can just pretty well do the math there. It's saying about one hour. All right, so right here is the specs on the USB-C and USB-A. You can see the different amperages that they're, they're marking down here. We're gonna have anywhere, depending on whether you're doing five volts at three amps. I'm gonna focus more on amperage than I am the wattage. Just kind of depends on what voltage it's running at. Same thing with the USB-C. So testing it out, the USB power adapter, we're coming in at 20 watts off the front of the display, and it's rated for 18. If you come down to the bottom and you look and see what exactly it's rated for on the bottom, it says it can do up to three amps of current at five volts. If we come down to here, we look at it, we are actually pulling 3.4 amps at 16 watts. So it's a little bit off, but I think it has more to do with the lightweight cables. Either way, that's a lot of amperage, three and a half amps to be pulling through these light gauge wires. We are showing that it's doing the amperage that it's actually rated at, actually about a half an amp more than it's rated at under the USB-A. We can take it a little bit higher. We can go up to 17 watts and that's where she drops out. So let's go ahead and jump over to the USB-C. And when you come down to the bottom and actually look at the USB-C, to whether you're doing five volts, nine volts, or 15 volts, you can average about three amps. You've got 20 volts could equal up to five amps, 200 watt max. They're playing with the wattage and the amperage that you're pulling it at. The 200 watts, I mean, we didn't even get to truly the 36 watts on the USB-A. Now, if you went 15 and 15 or 17 and 17, that would add up to be in 36 watts total. Uh, you know, there's not a lot of clarification on how they rated that, but that would make sense because I mean, if you look here, it does show a times two. I would figure each one would be capable of doing that. Now to go ahead and make sure that we have good calibration here, we're checking our voltage input into the device and we're coming in at 4.89. The device is reading 4.89. That's pretty accurate. Right now we're doing the USB-C to USB-C. Now these are rated at 100 watts, according to the rating on these, but just like anything, it's hard to say whether you're really truly gonna get what they say they're gonna give you. It's got the voltage set so that it should cut out when it gets down to 3.2. Now what's funny is, is we're not even getting to 3.2, but this shuts off. Now you gotta remember the meter's shutting off, not the actual power supply. Uh, you can see we're at 4.8. As I take this wattage up, it actually cuts out a lot sooner than what even the other, but the problem we've got here with this is it's a longer cable. So there's that. Yeah, it just, no, not happening. So yeah. Anyhow, um, but if you look at the amp draw, that's the biggest thing here. 3.3. So this theoretically, if you go by what they're rating at, we get true amp draw, because I don't like the way they're doing this. And it's several of all, all the different power stations do exactly the same thing, but they rate them at five volts, 12 volts. It, it doesn't put out 12 volts unless they, they know something I don't know. Maybe these cables have different terminals on them that you can get what voltage you want. But every time I plug it into this device, then granted, you know, are these true rated cables? Well, these cables here are truly 100 watts. Now we're going to go ahead and just test it for USB only. We've got everything reset. We're all back down to zeros. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Whether you're using A or C, it really don't matter. The battery capacity is what we're really looking at here. This thing charged an iPad Pro and it charged a MacBook Pro just fine, just like a plug-in charger. 
So we're just at a two and a half amp rate. Let's find out what we got and we'll look at it when it's dead. Currently been running right at 14 watts. We have four hours of power left. This has been running all day. We've been running almost 13 hours, 12 hours and 44 minutes. At two and a half amp load, we're still running 4.9 volts. So if you were charging multiple phones all day for 12 hours, you'd still have 32% uh, percent battery life left. This thing's not gonna go dead uh, before I go to bed. It kind of gives us an idea there how, how long it goes. Nothing feels really warm here on it. Like I said, two and a half amps, that's kind of the norm with what I'm seeing out of a lot of these uh, USB uh, plugs. Now this does offer uninterruptible power supply. As you can see right up here, UPS right there on the front display. And currently right now it's charging back up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and leave this little lamp on here to kind of give you an indication of when it transfers over. It's an LED bulb inside of it. So you should see just a slight blink when we unplug the utility coming into it. Meters reading 122, which is utility power. We're gonna pull it, that little blink. And let's go ahead and plug it back in. Right now we've got the battery out of this computer. So we're gonna go ahead and pull the power to the charging system on the battery and see if it takes the computer out. So here we go, and we unplug it, and it did not take it out. Go ahead and plug it back in, we'll do it one more time. See it's charging, computer's on, and we will pull it out one more time, and boom, did not lose the computer. Now, in case you're thinking I'm playing tricks with you, that's what would have happened if the power would have dropped out. All right, as far as testing here, we are running right at 600 watts. That's obviously the maximum capacity of this device. You see that our voltage is running 108 volts, which just averages around 110 to 111 on average. Frequency's holding in there about 59.8 watts, 595, 592, which is rated at 599, so the meter's pretty accurate. Now after that running there at 600 watts, here's your meter, 65 to 68 dB, that's about one foot away from it. Even going at three foot, which is generally where most things are measured at, somewhere around 60, 61-ish area. And something else we're going to do here is put the easy watt, kilowatt here up against this generic one here that uh, actually from what I'm seeing is pretty accurate. It's within three quarters of a volt to one volt on the power compared to this one. What we're literally gonna do is plug one into the next, and that way they'll both keep track of the power at the same time. What I like about this one here, easy to read is the biggest thing I liked about it. We're back to 100%. We're gonna go ahead and unplug the power from the wall. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in our power meters. Like I said, they're both zeroed out. We're gonna turn on our load and we're gonna let this run until it goes dead. The reason why I'm using the smaller wattage appliance is so that we're kind of giving it a 50% load instead of a 100% load. So we're already at 35 seconds. We're gonna go ahead and let this run and we'll come back, like I said, and after we run her down. All right, so far we've used 1.8 kilowatts. We've got 30% left. I wanted to check and see what our distortion is. We're running the amp probe power meter here, which we're going in at 2.2% total harmonic distortion, that is THD. And let's look at the oscilloscope while we're under load also. All right, now to go ahead and check it on the oscilloscope, we're just using the test leads to get any power over here to the oscilloscope. And right there is our waveform. It's still holding pretty much just about perfect. Got a little bit at the bottom and top there of the sine wave. At the very bottom, you see a little bit of a, a pattern. It's a little inconsistent, but otherwise, that's better than most of them that I've seen. In other words, it's clean power and it's perfectly suitable for any of your electronic gizmos and gadgets. All right, it just shut off right at 5%. Like I said, it could shut off at zero like it did on the DC test, or it could be 5% or so on the AC test. So we're gonna have to plug it in so we can read our meters. Where it stopped at was right at 249 kilowatts. And on the front one here, 240. So about 250, it's rated for 299. You got an efficiency loss there. Let's go ahead and do the math here real quick. We'll do that on the screen, but that's pretty typical for what, uh, from what I've seen so far out of the ones that I've tested. But 
there you have it. Now we're gonna take a quick look here at the charging rate. We're going in at 325 watts. This thing will be fully charged here in 20, 21 more minutes. Even some of the 1500 and 1800 uh, watt power stations that I'm reviewing only have 198 watts going into them. So this one recharges really fast. Although it's not the largest power supply out there, it does recharge rather quickly. With it being a 299 watt hour, I'm just gonna call it 300 watt hour battery. When you're cramming in 320 watts, it's gonna be less than an hour to recharge it. I mean, the mathematical formulas that they're doing here on the display is pretty simple and cut and dry, very easy to understand. Now, one thing we didn't go over yet was the app that they have for it. I did have problems with this with my Android. So let's go ahead and look at it with a Apple. Okay, we're gonna go in here to the All Powers app. We're gonna click on it. R4000 that I've already got, it's got a full fledged, you can check it out, turn things on and off. You're able to control different ones. Uh, this device here is Bluetooth only. It does not have Wi-Fi on it. So we're gonna go for Bluetooth devices, click on it, hit next step. This is where I had problems with the Android. Right there is the uh, 600. Click on it, connecting. It's very simple. So what you're seeing right here is pretty much the same thing that you've got on the display right there. We have the AC turned on or off. You can turn it off, but generally it won't charge unless it's turned on, so it's not really gonna shut it off. You can go down here to the DC. You can turn DC off, which I'll we'll hit the button right here. That will allow it to shut off. You can turn your light on and off, so yeah. Simple as that, 50 hertz versus 60 hertz. The last thing we really need is six, uh, 50 hertz. Uh, while it's on, I don't believe it will switch by accident, which is a good thing. Yeah, it's trying and it's saying no, which is good. You don't really wanna run your equipment at 50 hertz. As we've gotten closer to our charging rate of full, you can see that we've dropped down from 320 some watts down to 180. So it's slowly working it in there. So it does have intelligent charging. It's, it's not real, there's not a whole lot to turn on and off. I mean, once you're turning it on, you're doing your thing. I don't, I don't know if it's really a necessary thing having the app, but it is there. So if you're, you know, if you had a bigger system and it was outside or whatever, you'd be able to monitor it as long as you're within the range of the Bluetooth or the Wi-Fi. Now we're gonna go ahead and discuss the 200 watt solar panels. It's a nice small package, weighs in just at under 14 pounds. Has a total of four legs on the back that extend out, which will hold it up into the position. We got two latches right here on the front that we have to release to open it up. It's as simple as pushing the button, unfold and unfold. So we're gonna do it from the rear here so you can see what's going on. Okay, so we got everything there set up. Just take our plug and we plug it right into the side of the machine, plug it into the male female connectors right here on the back. Just take the male, plug it into the female and we're plugged in. All right, finally, the sun's coming out. We've got them set up right here. Let's see what kind of wattage we get out of it here. Cause this has been very difficult when it's just been crap weather to see what kind of wattage we can get out of it. 120, 128, 134. There we go. It's all dependent on what kind of sunlight you've got. If you don't have perfect sunlight, you'll never get the rating that they give you on these, never. And just so we can kind of see that we're not faking it out here. It's just sitting there facing the sun and it's poking in and out between those clouds. So it's definitely hit and miss on uh, whether it's gonna stay hitting it like it needs to. But that does verify that we do get at least a decent rating out of it if you got good sun. So if you're out there in the desert somewhere or you're in, a, you know, or in the middle of summer or out on the beach, whatever, it's gonna do awesome. But if, you're, if it's cloudy, uh, they're gonna be pretty much worthless. So we just rearranged them a little bit better. Let's see what we get this time. Yeah, 134. Like I said, it's just hit and miss. You can see the sun just uh, went behind a cloud and there it goes down. Solar ain't what everybody cracks it up to being. Uh, at that rate right there, as you can see, two hours to charge full. Now, when I first got this to review, I was a little bit hesitant because it is only 600 watts. I'm always looking for bigger's better. 
but there's plenty of times when you don't really need a huge battery power system, especially if you're wanting to stay mobile and you're charging small appliances. And now if you're wanting to run the house, obviously this isn't going to do it. The size of this thing is pretty, pretty decent. I mean, it's not heavy. It's not big. It's easy to transport. It's nice and round on all edges. You've got air vents on the side here, which makes it breathe well. You got the built-in plug here on the side, which allows you to charge without having to carry a brick. Your overload right here on the side, flap just pops up. I thought at first you push in on it, but it doesn't. You just flip it up and you're good to go there. Then on this side here, we've got, uh, you can see all into the uh, electronics there. You can see right through it. Yeah, you can see through the grass there. It's gonna get it. I mean, you just gotta give it two hours which you know is a benefit of having the smaller device so you're going to be able to get it uh, charged up a lot quicker now you can run the other outlets here you can run the 110 volt or you can run the 12 volt or the usb which uh whichever fits your fancy that's pretty much a breakdown of how the solar panels work pretty simple ain't a whole lot to it here's my opinion on this little portable power supply it's perfect for small items it's not going to run big items for very long but you only have that 300 watt hour battery so like i said take your wattage that you need and start subtracting it away from the time that you need to run it for. If you're just needing to charge some phones, batteries, things like that, and you need to have plenty of reserve power for what, whether it be a laptop, an iPad, um, a drone, you know, just really depends on what your application is. Everybody has different needs, different wants. You, the options and the things that it could be used for are endless, and it's really only up to you to decide whether or not this is the right size for you. If it's too small, they have a 700 watt, they have a 1500 watt, a 2000 watt, a uh, 4000 watt, um, pretty much a little bit of everything. So all you got to do is go over to the All Powers uh, website, check out some of the other models that they have available. The warranty on them is really good. It has five-year warranty. So far, everything's been pretty true to their word on the power ratings and what they're rating it at. Take it for what it's worth. I think it's a good little unit. I think it's well built. All the stitching on the solar panels is really well done. I don't see any threads that are hanging. Everything's straight. I'm going to leave a link down in the description below. Uh, click on that. You can read more about it and uh, check it out and see if it's something for you. I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch the video. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. And until next time, guys, thanks for watching.